Right, so it looks like uh, the time is now. Sorry, I'm just admitting. Okay. Just wanted to say a quick good day to you gentlemen and to our lovely lady. Hope all is well. Hello, yes. Uh, welcome. Uh, good morning. It's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning in Amsterdam. And good afternoon and good evening where the time is different. We are still waiting a few moments, as I can see people from the waiting room are joining our meeting. In the meantime, I will uh, start with the introduction. My name is Andrei Kuleshov. I'm chief of uh, strategy of the Common Fund for Commodities. Uh, here with me is my colleague, uh, Mr. Chris Rallis, investment manager in the fund. Uh, together between the two of us, we will be uh, running this webinar today. Uh, for those just joining us, this is the webinar of the Common Fund for Commodities regarding the open call for proposals. Uh, 24th open call for proposals to be precise. Uh, a few housekeeping announcements. I guess everybody is uh, familiar by now with the Zoom platform, but uh, just in case, if the broadcast is interrupted for whatever reason, uh, please log in with the same credentials and the webinar will continue where it may have broken off. But so far, so we, we have very good experience with those webinars. Also, uh, we will kindly ask everybody to keep their microphones muted. And we will be uh, muting all the new uh, people joining us, just to be uh, sure that mm -hmm. the uh, noise level in the virtual meeting room is kept down to the minimum so everybody can hear everybody else and that there is no echo and so on so we count on your understanding there uh, as we are running the webinar i'm sure you will have questions and while we are going through the presentation we will kindly ask you to uh, post your questions in the chat box and uh, in the chat box, uh, one of us will be opening, uh, sorry, will be responding to the questions uh, best we can. And in the end of the presentation, there will be an opportunity to answer, to, to ask and get an answer to questions uh, by voice or otherwise, or discuss anything else. Now, uh, we will uh, make the presentation available. We will circulate it by email to everybody uh, who has registered for the event. So please don't worry, you will have access to the presentation. And this uh, presentation is uh, recorded. So, uh, so, so the recording of the presentation will be available on the CFC website. So also you will be able to watch the presentation uh, if you ever want to come back to anything that we have discussed. Uh, so I see that uh, people are still joining us and my colleagues uh, will be admitting everybody in the meeting room. In the meantime, uh, let's get started. So uh, the outline of the presentation is in front of you. So first we are going to explain uh, what the common fund is about. And then we will go through the open call for proposals uh, section by section through the application form and the process so that uh, we could uh, we could give you a fair idea of how to submit an application for CFC financing. And this will be followed by the Q&A session. So 
without uh, wasting any more time, then I would like to proceed and tell you about the Common Fund for Commodities. So uh, let's have the next uh, slide, please. Yes. So the Common Fund for Commodities is an international uh, financing institution. Uh, it has been established within the framework of the United Nations. In uh, 1989, we have started our operations. Uh, it is a very small organization. Uh, we only have one physical presence, and that's at the headquarters in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. The Common Fund for Commodities uh, currently has uh, 101 member countries. That's pretty much uh, most of Africa, a large part of Asia, a large part of uh, Latin America, plus the European Union. And uh, we have institutional members, uh, international organizations, which have interest in the commodity sector, and that's the European Union, the African Union, Common Market for Eastern Southern Africa, Southern African Development Community, Economic Community of West African States, uh, Economic Union uh, of African States, of West African States, uh, Caribbean Community, East, East African Community, and the Andean Community. So all of those are organizations of international development. The Common Fund has uh, 34 years of experience in the global commodity sector, starting the operations in 1989. Over this time, we have financed over 500 projects addressing all sorts of issues in the commodity value chain. Uh, since 2014, the Common Fund uh, has come into the shape that it has at the moment as an impact investor, investing directly in small and medium enterprises in the commodity value chains uh, in developing countries where commodities are important. Since that time, the Common Fund invested uh, over $52 million in uh, 50 loans, uh, of which 38 million are currently outstanding, and we have activities or had activities in 99 countries over the years. So we are a truly global institution, but we are small and we are very, very targeted. So we operate in the sector where our competences are. Now, uh, uh, commodities, uh, we consider them to be the backbone of most developing countries, and also, mind you, the backbone of the global economy. So the cup of tea that I have in my hand maybe uh, has one cent worth of actual uh, tea, uh, and uh, the rest is other people's contribution to the value chain that, uh, that uh, produces that. Now, uh, commodities are uh, the root of poverty in our estimates of over 2 billion people worldwide who are trapped in the circle of commodity dependence. And that means that uh, they, for various reasons, have difficulties converting the products that they produce for the global market into a sustainable livelihood that can lift them out of poverty. Now, uh, CFC investments uh, look to transform the value chain, so it's not so much the CFC money that makes the difference, but it's the power of the global market that comes to the primary commodity producers to enable them to, fair, to earn a fair living out of the products that they produce. So this is the overall picture of the CFC, this is the philosophy of the CFC, and this is something where I will be coming and Chris will be coming to over and over again. This is the type of interventions that the CFC would like to finance. The CFC follows the uh, principle of additionality, partnership and innovation. So typically we look to intervene where our involvement would make the greatest difference. And the vision of the CFC is to become a significant contributor to their uh, efforts at sustainable development and poverty eradication. 
and the mission of the CFC is to provide financing for the commodity value chains where this financing is needed to address the vulnerabilities that people experience as the result of their involvement in the commodity markets. Uh, we can move to the next slide, please. Uh, this is probably the most useful diagram uh, regarding the way the CFC operates. So uh, the target of the CFC investment is the small and medium enterprises in developing countries. As some examples of what those small and medium enterprises can do with the CFC financing, they can improve the processing of commodities, they can improve the storage of commodities, they can make some innovation in the commodities that they deliver to the global markets, they can improve quality, they can work on the marketing, distribution and sales channels, and small and medium enterprises can enhance their logistics, their inputs, their procurement, and their connection to the smallholder farmers. Now, at the base of the commodity value chains is the smallholder farmers. We want to see the impact of the CFC projects, and we will come back to that. Uh, the impact of the CFC projects needs to accumulate at the level of smallholder farmers. Small, so uh, small and medium enterprises uh, receiving financing from the CFC need to bring value to the primary producers of commodities, to the smallholder farmers, to the poor and the vulnerable in developing countries. And this value is created by small and medium enterprises with the help of the CFC accessing the global markets. It says the international markets, but it really is truly global markets, regional markets, cross-border trades, anything that can deliver value through the small and medium enterprise to the primary commodity producers. Now, the CFC provides financial support in various forms, uh, and the most, uh, let's say, the instruments in highest demand uh, from the CFC, from our experience, are uh, trade finance, capital expenditure loans, working capital finance, and various sorts of quasi-equity investments uh, that are uh, case-dependent, strongly case-dependent. The CFC also has other instruments like development impact bonds, but these are fairly complicated and these might require separate, uh, separate discussions. So if you want to find out about this, there, there are references on the application form to the publications in this regard. And on the basis of these publications, if you think you are interested in those, you can come back to that. Uh, there will be time to talk about it uh, in the application form. We can uh, proceed to the next slide. Uh, so we will explain the open call for proposals. And we can move on to the next slide. So uh, to, uh, what I was trying to say so far is that CFC as an international financing institution provides certain financial support to small and medium enterprises in the developing countries who have their proposals that can potentially benefit the smallholder farmers, the poor and underprivileged producers of the primary commodities from developing countries with an objective to providing them the sustainable livelihoods. Our typical interventions are financed by the CFC, focus on agricultural commodity sector, uh, on cooperatives, various institutions, whoever is active in the commodity value chain is welcome to apply. There are virtually no constraints on the type of the organization that can apply to the CFC. Uh, some examples uh, some uh, examples of and I'm just muting the conference the virtual meeting room. Uh, some examples of uh, interventions that can deliver positive change include agroforestry, 
uh, currently in very high demand, also climate smart agriculture, uh, regenerative agriculture, renewable energy, uh, food security interventions are always of importance. Uh, recently came to great attention digitalization, the use of uh, novel technologies, financial inclusion, and there are more. There is literally endless universe of the type of, of the type of interventions that could be considered by the CFC. Now I see a hand raised, and I would like to reiterate that uh, uh, there will be space for Q and A session by voice in the end of the presentation. We want to go through the presentation first. But if you have a question that you uh, want to ask in the meantime, please type it in the chat box. And in the chat box, then uh, one of my colleagues will try to answer the question. So we are not going to stop for questions now to be able to go through the basics. Many of the questions will be answered in the course of the presentation. Now, uh, returning to the current slide, so finally, uh, essential is that uh, proposals need to demonstrate that they can be sustainable. And that means that they should not only be sustainable in the, in the uh, social and environmental and other types of sustainability, but also they need to be financially viable. So financial viability is a requirement for project proposals uh, seeking financing from the CFC, and we will need financial projections. Uh, we will uh, talk more about it as we go through the application form. Can we move to the next slide? Right, and again, uh, I'm not uh, ignoring. I see the hands raised in the meeting room, but I would kindly ask everybody to uh, wait with the question until the end of the presentation. And I can see that uh, that there are two hands, but I'm not going to stop the presentation for that. Uh, now, uh, the application process. So as you are applying in the open call for proposals, what can you expect to happen with your application? Every proposal will be read by somebody, by one of the project managers in the secretariat in the process of internal screening. We have a checklist of basic requirements as I have just shown them. Uh, and uh, somebody will read the proposal and complete, uh, complete the uh, checklist uh, to make sure that the proposal meets the minimum qualification criteria for subsequent consideration by the CFC. Uh, those are checklists are discussed with the chief operations officer and the project manager and some other senior colleagues to decide which uh, proposals need to be seen by the CFC's consultative committee on the basis of them meeting the minimum requirements for CFC consideration. Those projects that meet the requirements, they will be seen by the consultative committee. The consultative committee is an independent body composed of nine specialists in the commodity sector. So if you are sending a proposal, for example, on Fonio, to take one example that people consider or may consider unlikely to be known outside uh, West Africa, there will be somebody on the consultative committee with the knowledge and experience of Fonio who will be able to assess the proposal. So there, there are experts who know how commodities work and they meet twice a year, every six months to review qualifying project proposals to decide which ones can be recommended for approval by the executive board. That explains that uh, the CFC has six month lead time for proposals. So proposals need to be received and they need to be seen by the next consultative committee. If we uh, 
did not understand something in the project proposals, in the project proposal that we receive, a project manager can reach out to you. There are contact details that need to be indicated on the application form. So a project manager will reach out to you, try to seek clarification if there is something, but if, if the project meets the required, uh, the required criteria, but there is some something minor that needs to be clarified before it can be seen by the consultative committee. After the consultative committee, upon positive recommendation, we will provide you some feedback. We will provide we will explain the terms and conditions, and the decision on the proposal will be made by the executive board of the CFC. The executive board also meets twice a year every six months. So again, six month cycle, twice a year, the CFC processes the next batch of proposals. We can move to the next one. If the executive board approves financing for the proposal, uh, they will do it on the basis of the information that we receive in the application form. So we will not visit the project before a decision by the executive board. But once the executive board approval has been given, then we will carry out on-site due, due diligence. We will make sure that any conditions set by the executive board can be satisfied, and we will need to conclude the essential legal documentation, that is the non-binding term sheet, uh, the completed due diligence report, the social and environmental sustainability report on the project, and proceed to uh, sign an agreement with, between the CFC and the recipient. Uh, this agreement becomes the basis of CFC financing. We do expect to be able to conclude this process within 12 months after the board approval. Uh, if uh, the project is not making progress, if some conditions cannot be met, then the CFC reserves the right to withdraw its commitment to a project after 24 months if no progress is achieved in signing the legal documents. Uh, now, getting to the next point, so all, all of that taken together, this is the calendar. This is how the call for proposals will proceed. So up to 1st of April, we are receiving applications. Uh, between April and May, screening will happen. We will read all the applications. We will uh, screen them, and we will prepare a submission to the consultative committee of the fund. In June, we are going to send the, the documents to the consultative committee. And in July, the first week of July, the consultative committee will meet in Amsterdam face to face for a whole week to discuss projects qualifying for CFO consideration one by one and make a recommendation what projects uh, are worthy or are suitable to be uh, considered by the executive board. Between August and September, we will have some time to address any comments, any reservations made by the consultative committee before submission to the board. And in early October this year, there will be the next meeting of executive board that will decide on the current batch of projects. So, proposal received by the CFC by 1st April 2024 will receive a decision from the executive board in early October 2024. And then you will know if uh, the CFC would like to make a commitment in support of the project proposal. So this concludes the part uh, dealing with the calendar. And we are going to move on to the application form. And I believe I have just one more slide, uh, two more slides to explain before my colleague takes over. And that's the next slide, please. So uh, before, uh, uh, some disclaimers, basically, with regard to the application form, the CFC will not charge any fees at the application stage. Uh, so if, uh, if you would like to pay consultants, please feel, feel free, but the CFC does not charge anything at the application stage. Uh, please provide complete and accurate information 
for all projects uh, supported uh, or recommended for support by the CFC, we will conduct due diligence, we will check the facts listed on the application form. So complete and accurate information helps us to work in an efficient way. Uh, also, we would like to apologize in advance that uh, we will not be able to enter into correspondence on those project proposals uh, not selected for further consideration. This is because the CFC receives um, something like 500 proposals in a year, and we simply uh, must concentrate our capacity on the projects that have a chance of receiving financing from the CFC. Uh, all other financial institutions follow the same policy. We're not unusual in this regard. This is simply a consequence of high demand for CFC services. We would like to be of greater help, but if the project is not qualified for consideration by the CFC, we will not be able to enter correspondence with regard to this project. Also, please check the exclusion list on the CFC website. There are certain things that the CFC will never finance and therefore a project proposal addressing those things will not uh, receive uh, positive consideration in the CFC. Also, uh, some proposals may contain confidential commercial information and we kindly ask everybody to indicate clearly which information is to be treated as confidential. Uh, we uh, must show the full project proposal to our governing bodies, that is to the consultative committee and to the executive board, and we will use the confidential information provided to us uh, to enable them to make a decision on the project undergoing consideration. Finally, all questions, all submissions under open call go to the open call at commonfund.org. We strive to answer every question that we receive at this address. This address is constantly monitored by somebody, so please do not hesitate to come to us on this email address. And can we have the next slide? And this is the first section of the application form, the organization background, and that includes a profile of the organization, the registered names, the registration documents, what kind of organization, who owns the organization, who is the founder, who is the shareholder, what is the ownership structure, and other formal registration data for us to be able to identify the organization clearly. And then the target market of the uh, project of the proposal and a brief summary of financing objectives. That is what the CFC money is going to be used for. So this is the introductory section. And I am uh, happy to ask for next slides and to invite my colleague, uh, Mr. Chris Rallis, investment manager, to explain the detail of uh, financing uh, request and other parameters of the projects. Chris, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Andre. My name is Chris Rallis. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, today, I will walk you through the CFC application form and the Excel template that you need to fill and submit to the CFC to be eligible for funding. Uh, it's my first time doing that, so please bear with me. But the good news is that I'm one of the people that will be screening the incoming proposals. So I will share with you some tips and information on how to write an effective funding proposal. So just before I start, uh, just a reminder, less is more. Uh, please try to keep the application within the 20 page uh, limit. Try to be concise, try to be clear, and also use uh, tables, figures, uh, and numbers to substantiate your arguments. This makes our life easier. We can read the application more easy and have better feedback for you. Uh, the second chapter of the application form, which again, you can find it in our website, uh, concerns uh, the type of financing that the CFC can offer to you. 
before we delve into that, uh, four major points here about the types of financing we can offer. Uh, number one, uh, the CFC share of financing cannot exceed 50% of the total financing for a project. What that does mean? This means that the CFC funds should be at least be matched by other sources of funds. For example, think here of other loans from banks that you can take or you have already taken, equity that you have invested in your company, or retain earnings. So just a simple example here, because this is an issue that we will receive quite a few questions. Uh, assume that you're a company, you're requested 1 million in working capital from the CFC. What you have to provide is evidence that you have already made or you will be make an extra investment matching those funds. Now, I call you to be creative in here. Uh, we will listen every type of proposal you bring in and we will consider it. That brings me to the second point though, uh, all the assets that you want to disclosure to us, new loans, uh, equity investments, or their investment of profits in the future should be clearly shown in your balance sheet. If we cannot see it in your balance sheet, we cannot consider it as co-financing. Again, if you have any questions over that, you can always reach out to us. Our third point here, as you see, is the duration of the loan. Now, the CFC, it's, it's policy to enter into long-term partnership agreement, which means that in the end of the process, we will be signing a framework agreement for three or up to five years. This concerns also our short-term financing uh, tools. For example, our trade finance tools or our working capital. So although those facilities are for 12 or max 18 months, those are facilities that are renewable for up to five years. Now, our final point, and probably the one million uh, question everyone has in its mind, uh, our interest rate. We have a very transparent way of uh, calculating the interest rate we are charging. What we do is we take into consideration the country credit rating plus the company specific risk profile, taking out a premium from impact. What does that mean in practice? This means that we usually end up being cheaper than the national banking system and also in the lower side of other investors like ourselves, impact investors out there. Now, to give you just a broad range, in our current portfolio, our interest rates range from 5% and go up to 12%. Uh, this involves, of course, different kind of countries. Uh, some of those are fragile countries with no banking systems. And you can expect that the higher the risks, the lower, the higher also it's the interest rate. If we can move now in the next slide. So here uh, in section two, uh, what we have is the different type of loan financing and other tools that the CFC can offer to you. Now, if you see in the box, uh, you would have to choose one of the instruments that you want to use. You can also use multiple instruments. For example, you could use trade finance in combination with a term loan. But let's go one by one and see what that is. So the first one, it's trade finance. This is actually our most popular uh, let's say, financial product out there. Uh, this is short-term financing for the execution of specific client orders. Now, this uh, can be pure trade finance, which concerns uh, disbursement uh, against shipping documents. That's the simplest way. But it could also be the case that we will disperse uh, funds already at the time when the company goes out there and needs to source its raw materials uh, from farmers or other aggregators. You could consider this as a type of pre-financing. 
These facilities is usually 12 month facilities, again, renewable for up to five years. Now, one important thing here to note is that since these facilities are connected with specific purchase orders, we need to know uh, who your clients are, uh, in which countries they are based and what do you expect from them. The reason for that is that we usually ask uh, for those clients and you to enter in a tripartite agreement between us three, the CFC, the applicant company, and the client to ensure that the money will be returning to the CFC uh, after dispersing the loan. The big benefit of this facility, uh, and it's a big one actually, uh, it's that in this case, we will not require any other type of collateral. The purchase order from a reputable client for us is usually enough. Now, if we move to the next uh, facility, uh, the working capital facility, pretty much the same purpose here. Uh, this is a more flexible, uh, anti-short-term financing facility that usually tries to match uh, the cash cycle of a company. This also could range from 12 months and could go up to 18 months, again, renewable for up to five years. Yet, in this case, since CFC cannot exercise any control in the cash flow of the company, as in the case of trade finance, we would be asking of some form of collateral. You could think here, uh, a pledge on inventory, pledge on receivables, a collateral management agreement, or a third party guarantee. Again, the rule of thumb here is that the longer the cash cycle of a company is, the more securities we will be looking to securitize the facility. Going to the third one, uh, this is term loans. This is a very uh, typical structure here. It's basically loans uh, for CAPEX investments. Think here uh, of building a factory, expanding a farm, uh, or buying new machinery. Those are facilities, again, for up to five years. And we usually do offer also an extra two-year grace period based on the need. Now, let's do a, a general comment of those three uh, instruments. Those are just typologies. What that means is that in the end of the day and in practice, we always try to tailor and customize our interest, uh, our uh, financing tools and our interest based on what you need. So if we have a clear proposal and we understand what's the need, we will try to adapt to that need. If we go to the next slide, uh, in our mandate, uh, we are also supposed to do equity investments. Unfortunately, at the moment, we do not do direct equities to companies. Uh, the reason that we do not do that is because it takes too much time for us. We don't have at the moment the capacity to do that. But what we actually do is we provide equity investments to other impact investment funds out there. Those are impact investment funds that are, have a, a riskier profile than us. Imagine funds that invest in primary agriculture, uh, poultry, uh, and other related activities, which are very risky. And if you are an impact investment fund out there, this is the tool that you should be interested in. Our final tool here uh, would be the development impact bond. This is a very strategic uh, tool for the CFC. Uh, it's a very new and innovative tool that we have uh, spearheaded the last three, four years. And it's an outcomes-based financing tool. What we do here is provide pre-financing based on expected impact. Now, let's put it in practice. Consider you're an NGO uh, or company or a cooperative, and you have a very good idea about doing a technical assistance project. 
or you want to uh, help your farmers enter into carbon credit tra trading. And you also have a sponsor out there, but this sponsor does not want to disperse uh, any funds before he sees results. So this is a tool that will help you to bridge this gap. Essentially, the CFC will be providing this pre financing, will be verifying the impact outcomes, and then, of course, it will be repaid by your sponsor. This is a tool uh, that we have started uh, to basically unlock donor funding to NGOs and companies out there. So going to the next slide, please. So this is the last uh, financing tool that we have for you today. This is our fast track financing. So fast track uh, loans concern small ticket size under $300,000 uh, starting from $50,000. It could concern both repayable loans, but also grants. I know for some would be very interesting that but I have to disclose that this type of financing is very difficult. For CFC, uh, it's a prerequisite to have a very innovative project with large impact and big additionality for the CFC to consider something like that. So if you think that you, for example, have a fast track loan in mind, and that one fits also a working capital facility or a trade finance facility, please add both and suggest both. And we will determine if you're eligible or not. So let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, now we go to the details of the proposal in the chapter three. So we have manager management and operations. Uh, simple uh, chapter, what we want to learn in general is how the company works and who manages the company. In section 331 three, called management and ownership, what we want to know is the name of the people and their experiences in managing the company or the organization. We want to know if there is a board of directors, who are the members of this board of directors, you have to go through the organizational structure of the company. Here, of course, you can attach an org chart, for example, uh, the CVs of your senior management team and also your board of directors and any other relevant information. Now, in addition to that, what we would like to know is who owns the company. So we would like to know who are the shareholders of the company and what percentage of shares they hold into the company. In addition, we would like to know if the company is a holding company. Does your company own other companies? Or is your company part of a larger business group? That's something we also like to know. Again, uh, in the proposal, uh, you can add, for example, a simple picture or image of a chart showing this kind of relationship between companies or shareholdings. Okay, uh, moving to the third, uh, no, please, in the previous slide. In the next session, uh, 3.2, it's the current business model. So what we want here is basically a very high level description of what the company does. Now here, please assume that we do not know anything. We do not know anything about the value chain you're working on or anything related to this sector. So please start from the basic. So start from what type of company you are, what type of products are you producing, how are you sourcing your raw materials, do you do any processing, and what kind of processing are you doing, what kind of processing facilities you also have at your disposal, what kind of machinery, this kind of information. So in addition to that, please feel free to add information like how many employees you have, what's their qualifications. And 
one thing very important please explain to us who are your end clients we want to know who are your clients and in which countries do you export if you do so now the key here is to include numbers numbers of figures for example add the number of the sourcing volume per year or your export volumes per year or per client so this geographic distribution of your exports now this is all important information for us to understand the business model of the company uh, often this one is one of the most crucial uh, parts of the proposal if we do not understand the business model it is very difficult for us to move forward with your proposal if we go now to the next slide okay so this one the next uh, chapter is called market opportunity now in general if we want to put a big question here what we want to know is what is the market and the environment where your company operates and how your company fits into that market. Now, in section 4.1, uh, you're asked to fill up information about your market position and your competitors. Now, what do we mean here? What we want you to do is to explain us the market and the industry you are working in. We want us we want you to give us the basic characteristic of the market, both at the local level, but also at the international level. So think about macro level information. Think about information like, is it a very competitive market? Are there many companies doing the same thing like you? Or are you only the one offering this specific product in the international or local market? Now, other things that you have to include is information, for example, like what's price competition in this sector? Are prices very competitive and volatile? Um, how is the price mechanism works in this uh, sector? Is it with uh, long-term agreements or is it a spot market? Uh, please also include in detail what kind of products you have in your product line. And also explain to us how do your competitors look? So please include uh, a number of your competitors that you know they're out there uh, that are your direct competitors. If you have information about their volumes or their market share, feel free to include that there. A very good example for a proposal we received, uh, it was a coffee cooperative from Uganda. What they simply did was they went to the local national coffee authority they found out a list of the volumes exported by country, and they just uploaded this document to show to us that this is our market share. Very simple, very straightforward. Now, apart from that, we go uh, to the next session, which is 4.2. What are your key strengths? The key strengths of your business model. Now, this is the chapter where you need to showcase yourself, to speak about the qualities of your uh, company and your key points. What's your point of importance in this market? Think here, for example, very creatively. Do you have a niche product or is your product a very quality one, very high quality that differentiates you from other competitors? Do you have a unique selling propositions compared to your competitors? Do you have only one product or do you have many products? Think also other things like be creative. For example, is there a particular government policy that is very beneficial to your business model? For example, a local regulation uh, that takes out tariffs or uh, subsidies from the government. Think all these things also. Finally, I'm sure many of you uh, have a number of certifications, organic certifications, fair trade, rainforest alignment certifications. Those are relevant here. Include those here because that's things that differentiate you from other companies. And we want to know that. Now, 
one extra thing that you need to include here is your sourcing strategy. What we need to know is how do you source your raw materials? Now, what we need to know is, do you work with smallholder farmers or do you work with through aggregators? If you work with smallholder farmers, do you have long-term contracts with them? Or it's a spot market. You just go to the field and you buy your raw materials. Now, other things like, do you have your own uh, farms that you're using for your sourcing? These are all things relevant in this point. Here, we need to know that you have a secure sourcing value chain. And also, here is the first time we find what we call the social impact. So we know to see what is the impact on farmers. Now, the last part of this section, 4.3, the obstacles. Now, every company out there has some obstacles, some limitations, and have some problems. Here, you need to start writing those obstacles. This is for us to understand the potential risk you are facing, so we can adapt to your needs. It's not about judging you, it's just exactly that, is to understand the risk you are facing. So think, for example, internal shortcomings. For example, we don't have enough employees to do this specific uh, activity. Or in our country, it's very difficult to hire this type of qualified employees. Are there things? Consider risks in your sourcing, risks in your processing, uh, think, risks even in your transport of products. This is all relevant here, and we need to understand those. Now, if we go to the next slide, just a short comment. We will have time in the end to have questions. So we see the raised hands, but we will come back to you in a bit. So uh, moving to the next one, uh, this section, this chapter called Proposed Operational Model. So this is a reflection, actually, of the previous chapter. So what you need to think here is, how will my company look in a couple of years from now? How will it look in the future? So think, for example, let's go in the section 5.1, the proposed business model. Think, for example, what will happen to your business model after the CFC disbursement, disbursements? So think, how will your business model will change after you receiving CFC financing? For example, are you going to change your business strategy? Are you going, for example, to change your uh, product line? Are you going to include new products or innovative products? Are you going to focus to different geographies, export geographies? Uh, you will find new crime countries. All those things are relevant. In section 5.2, again, the same uh, thing. It's the impact of CFC financing on your client base, on your growth potential. So what we want to know here is, if we disperse the CFC loan, what will happen with your client base? Will you have more clients? Or will you be just increasing the volumes in existing uh, clients? And what is the, poten the growth potential? Will your revenues increase? What is the difference? Think also of your model. Think what changes could happen across your value chain. In next section 5.3, you need to consider what will happen in your supply line. What does that mean? So, after CFC financing, will you increase your sourcing from smallholder farmers or from aggregators? Or will you use the same farmers and aggregators than before, but you will be sourcing more volumes? And how will your supply line look like? What will be the relationship with aggregators and farmers? Will you have contract agreements? Will you have a spot market again? This is all things that you need to put them here to make the proposal as much as clear as possible to us. 
in section 5.4 uh, production process now here we want to know if there will be any change in your processing capacity for example think uh, are you going to uh, buy new machinery or are you going to implement new processing strategies or simply if we disperse for example working capital will that increase the volumes of your production this is things you can add in this section now crucial thing here please use figures and numbers we want to have an expectation of what you are planning to do now the final section of this part 5.5 is about innovation now innovation uh, is a cornerstone of our proposals uh, we uh, look at very positively any type of innovation that the company does, and it does have an effect in the success of an application. Now, what do we need from innovation? Of course, new technologies, new production uh, and processing strategies, but it could be other more simple things. Imagine, for example, you introduce a new product in the market or you are the first uh, company that produces a specific product uh, in your country for example finland starts producing coffee very rare very difficult but it is an example okay but be sure that we will take that very into consideration if we go to the next slide please this is, I think, uh, with Andre. Please, Andre. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chris. And uh, being uh, cognizant of the time remaining, I would ask to jump straight to the next slide. So everybody can read in the application form the section. I wanted to emphasize that as I started explaining in the very beginning, we look for the impact at the level of the primary producers of commodities. We use the metrics of Iris Plus, and that's available on the internet. There is thousands of indicators, and we ask to choose the ones that can be realistically reported. We understand the limitations of small and medium enterprises, and we simply need the assessment at the very basic level, most informative possible what kind of development impact is the project going to be delivered. There is Excel spreadsheet where uh, this is explained that is also downloadable with the application form. And again, recognizing that we have only three minutes left out of the uh, official time of the meeting, I wonder if we can uh, jump to the next, uh, the, one slide before next. The financial statements, uh, the, there are Excel forms that you can complete. These are standard financial statement forms. Can we move on? Uh, the balance sheet, move, move on, next one. And uh, supporting documents. So you need to provide uh, the audited statements, the financial statement, the track records of performance, the registration documents and so on. There is nothing unusual about it. These are simply the documents to confirm that, that the application form is completed in good faith by the people who are, are capable of implementing the projects. And we can move on. Uh, key details of the organization, so-called identification form, and the next one. And finally, the confirmation. So we ask, please do not forget to complete this uh, affirmation part of the document where you, you are confirming that you are who you are, that you are not currently a subject of uh, litigation and so on, and uh, that any confidential information that you're providing us must be clearly indicated so we can treat it as confidential. And I believe this uh, needs to conclude the presentation. And now I can see two hands have been raised for a while. Uh, so, uh, Chris, do you want to add anything before we ask for, for a couple of questions by voice? No, better start with the questions. Thank you. 
Right. Okay. So uh, I believe uh, Zoom is uh, tracking and Mr. Uh, Shafiq Payam, please uh, be very brief with the question. Mr. Shatik Payam, please so go ahead, please. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, everything. And uh, just I have a, a small uh, a question about the uh, part of the eight point two. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, there is a, uh, uh, about the assessment of the uh, about the supplementary recommended supplementary documents. Uh, uh, just I want to ask you uh, who should uh, do this assessment? Uh, we ourselves or some uh, local organization or any international organization? Uh, just uh, I want to know who should do this assessment and which kind of uh, uh, certificate do you need about this part? Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. So the simple answer is uh, whatever you have, uh, we understand the difficulties. Uh, there is now a lot of discussion about the sustainability disclosure regulations and so on. We have to, we have to ask for it. If you have it, please supply it. There will be in social and environmental impact assessment and risk management tool applied to the project if the project is successful. So that's the best I can answer at this time. This is a matter of much concern, and this is under. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we move to. Uh, we are already one minute past the time, and I see three hands raised. So can we first go to Mr. Jaihun Bali? Hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you from Pass from your time. Yes, we can. Uh, I I, I have uh, just uh, sent my questions in the inbox chat because the time was very short, so I thought to write write down my uh, questions. Uh, the one question I had to from CFC was the uh, charges. Uh, after approval for Afghanistan. Uh, Afghanistan is a member country. It's a, uh, I can see a fairly uh, a six points question in the chat box. We will be able to answer this by email. If you email okay. at the open call. Uh, I know okay. that Alex had a call with Afghanistan just yesterday. Okay, that's great. No problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, we have uh, two more hands, uh, hands raised. If there's anything burning, then please uh, unmute your microphone and ask the question. Otherwise, we would be able to give you a more detailed answer by correspondence by email. Now you see that we are real people, that, uh, that uh, there, there will be someone like one of us uh, behind the email address of open call, and you will get a uh, detailed, accurate answer. So best best we can. So please, if uh, if uh, there is anything urgent now, two three minutes past the time, please go ahead, unmute, and ask the question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here is Augustine Chambo. Um. Yeah. Hello. Yes, we can. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Yes. Um, I just have uh, two questions to ask. Um, first of all, um, I heard that uh, uh, at the time when we, we explained about the who we are getting the uh, the raw from, and uh, who are we getting, going to, uh, to 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 supply those uh, outcome which we are going to to produce. Uh, we should take it from the farmers or from the local one, and then we sell it outside of the country. But uh, to my side, uh, what I'm doing uh, is a little bit different that uh, I should import um, some of raw material 
And uh, when we produce them uh, on that project, which we, I'm going to share with you, that uh, is going to be used by the local um, local uh, firms over here who are doing exporting to uh, outside of the country, especially on the coffee, cocoa, cashew nut. Those are people who are my customer even right now. Mm -hmm. And um, therefore, um, how 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 should I um, uh, uh, put it in a proposal? Because uh, I've seen it's a little bit different from what you're looking for. Um, I think you, you, you got it. Another question um, is um, at CFC on the sharing ratio over there. It's very okay. But uh, to my side, I'm just looking that in a different way that uh, um, those firms or those uh, financial uh, institution who uh, want do you want to support on the pro same same project, they just say that uh, who are you going to share with? It might be very easy also to put like a commitment letter from this institution who are uh, intending to do the same same project which you want to to support from our side. That's another question. Uh, sir, I would love to be able to answer this question in this conversation, but uh, we simply cannot analyze the project proposal by voice. Uh, I will have to ask you to send the proposal to the open address, and then we will be able, so then somebody will yes. create a detail, because currently we will not be able to give uh, justice to your question. Thank you. Yeah, Andre, I have a very quick answer on that. So Go ahead. Go ahead. First of all, for the first one, you are eligible. If you if you have activities in a CFC member countries, you are eligible for financing. For the second one concerning the co-financing, yes, of course, you can use letter of intent from banks or any types of proof. Right. Okay, thank you very much. And we are seven minutes uh, past the time. So I see a hand raised, but I will have to kindly ask all subsequent questions to be sent to the open call address. Uh, can I ask my colleagues to project the slide with the CFC address again? The final slide of the, of the presentation. Not coming, so I see if I can get this from my screen, yes. So I am using this from my screen, I hope. Right, so uh, please take a note of uh, the CFC email address. Uh, please send your questions to this address and we will be happy to give you a uh, greater detail on what has been said today. I would like to thank you for joining this webinar. I can see still hands raised. And again, in view of the time, I will have to ask to contact us on the address indicated on the screen. And all the documents are downloadable from the CFC website. The address is in the chat box. Uh, we will circulate all the same information to all the people who registered. And the recording of this webinar will be on the CFC website. So with this, I would like to thank everybody for joining us, for staying with us. We have great attendance. I have to say, I think it's the largest attendance so far. Thank you for joining us. Apologies that we have not been able to answer all the questions. We tried our best in the chat box and also here by voice. And our open call address is open. Please, uh, please don't hesitate to come to us. I thank you. And this webinar is concluded. Also, thank you, my colleagues, for helping us. Have a nice day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.